Good evening, everyone. It is Tuesday, the first Tuesday in 2021. So Happy New Year. Welcome to To Write and Have Written. Hi, Shy Red Fox. I'm glad you're here. Thanks for coming in. All right. Um, so we are it's like the obligatory New Year theme, but I'm going to try to do it in a slightly less uh, hackneyed way tonight. Um, I want to talk about housekeeping and goals because for all that, uh, uh, for all that we, you know, make big deals about New Year's resolutions and all of that sort of thing. And there's a whole lot of sociological and psychological and all kinds of things that, you know, <laughs> just there's a, there's a truckload of baggage and cargo and everything goes with that. But there really is a uh, psychological and behavioral benefit to setting a start date for new behavior. And thank you, Bridger. I love these earrings too. They're so much fun. All right, sorry. Um, <laughs> they're just, I, yeah. So um, I read last fall, I read uh, the book When by Daniel H. Pink, which I highly recommend. Um, it was just really fascinating information. It was all about chronobiology and, um, you know, the, the, not only when you are most productive, most creative, and, you know, the individual cycles that will happen, uh, for you personally, um, uh, you know, I might be most creative in the day. I might be most organized, um, at night, you know, whatever. Um, but also, you know, the, uh, behavioral and psychological aspects of setting goals, setting, you know, deadlines, restarting goals. Um, yeah, yeah, it is really good. I do recommend it. Um, I listen to the audiobook because that's how I do most of my nonfiction. Um, but, uh, and apparently there's a lot more graphs and charts and things in the, in the, uh, tactile book. <laughs> what am I saying? Paperback. Thank you. <laughs> I'm fine. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, where was I going with that? I have no idea. The point is, uh, he had a lot of really good information on, you know, if something's getting away from you, you know, this project's not going well, you can say, well, it's the first, you know, Tuesday on a full moon. That's the fresh date that we start this new segment of time. And you can actually, um, get back on track by having a arbitrary restart date. So, um, yes. Uh, when by Daniel H pink. Thank you, Bridger, for throwing that in the chat. Um, so I do recommend that we're not going to spend a lot of time on that tonight, but I'm using it as justification for why we are uh, going to talk about some of the things we're going to talk about because, um, you know, I, I just, I found it was fascinating. Uh, anyway, I'm, I'm a nerd. What do you want? Okay. So what we're going to do tonight is first, we're going to walk through just like, okay, we've had an arbitrary new start. Um, let's go ahead and, and clean up our business practices. Let's clean up our housekeeping, you know, and make sure that our, uh, writing careers are in order. Um, and then we're going to, we are going to talk about some goal setting, but, um, it's, it's January. Everybody's talking about goal setting. I'm not going to tell you that much that, you know, you're not going to get in 20 other places. So I'm going to stick to the things that I think I can tell you that will be useful and productive because you're going to get a, everything else from, from somewhere else right now. And, uh, and that's fine. We got other things we can be talking about. And, um, and we'll talk about setting our actions to reach goals because just setting goals doesn't actually make them happen. Um, and you know, well, you know, yeah, we'll just, we got a lot of things to go through. So I've got a lot of notes over here. Um, and I'm sorry, let me get my notification, please. I thought I had this turned off, but apparently it's not because it's running over my notes. Okay. Sorry. I'm so organized. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so the first thing I wanted to mention was just reviewing our good business practices. Um, so things that I see come up all the time that let's just run down the list and take care of those. So first of all, are you using unique passwords for every website and every account that you have? The answer to this should be yes. If you, it, you know, there, there may be a, a few things where you could reuse something, something that really doesn't matter. You've just like, uh, this is my, I'm trying, I'm trying to pick something that's dumb. This is my, um, my grocery store list app. And, uh, I don't really care if it's super secure if somebody knows that I bought Oreos. Okay. <laughs> you like that, that could, that could be a thing, but especially for any account that matters, any account that is linked to financial, personal information, you know, just 
any, you know, your shopping, all of that is in there. Um, please make sure that you're using unique passwords. This is something that I see people, um, not do frequently. And, um, let me just say that identity theft will really cut into your writing time. So, <laughs> um, I highly recommend if you are not, uh, if you don't have a system to do this, or if you don't have a password manager to do this, I use and strongly recommend LastPass. I do have links for some of the things I'm going to recommend here tonight. Um, some of these our, some of these are affiliate links. Some are not. This is an affiliate link. Um, and for those of you who are catching this later, they will be in the show notes. Um, so I'll do that. I'm just going to throw this one in the chat here right now. Um, the advantage you can you can use the affiliate links or not. I don't care. For some of them, like if you use it with LastPass, you get some free stuff with that. Um, and I do too, so full disclosure. If it's not something that you're using or if you wanna use something else or you just don't wanna use the affiliate, like great, okay, there we go, we're good. Yeah, Shy Red Fox says LastPass is wonderful. It really is. Like I recommend this a lot. I have set a lot of people up with it. Um, and um, and they're, they're very good, uh, I'll say that too. Along with that, in the same way, if you are not using two-factor authentication on all your websites that matter, I strongly recommend you get that set up and do that as well. If you're not familiar with two-factor authentication, um, that is you actually need three things to log into something instead of two. Instead of a username and a password, you would also need a code. Usually it's a six-digit numeric code um, that is constantly changing so that if somebody does get your password but they don't have, say, the, f the smartphone on which you have a, a third party uh, app providing you that code. They, they need all three of those to get in. Uh, TFA has saved me a couple of times when people were trying to hack into my stuff. Generally, my passwords are pretty, pretty strong. So they're, um, they're not uh, going to get those easily anyway, but brute force is a thing. And, um, you know, so that it's, it is very, very good. Uh, if you're going to do that, I recommend Authy, A-U-T-H-Y. Actually, I have a link for that here too. I'll just throw that in the chat. Um, it's free, it's easy to set up, it's secure, and um, it's very user-friendly. Um, I like it because uh, I used to use a different app. Um, Authy is better because if I, you know, if you lose your smartphone, if it gets hit by a truck, you drop it down the toilet, who knows what, um, you can still access all of those codes in another way, which is not the case with all of your TFA apps. So be aware of that. So, okay. The other thing next on my list is, are you backing up your work? Please be backing up your work. I'm going to say I'm in so many writing groups online guys, and I'm going to say at least once or twice a month, uh, somebody posts with, help, I dropped my laptop, my computer crashed, my hard drive's gone, you know, whatever. How do I get my stuff back? Well, in some cases, there's a way to recover that. Usually it's expensive. Uh, in some cases, there's not a way to recover that, but backups, backups are free and easy and they, you can do it at any time. <laughs> so, okay, good. I'm finally, you know, Shy Red Fox says you're hitting all my big things. I got a list and a hammer and we're going down. Yes. So yay, Bridger, you're finally doing, I, I don't know if that's TFA or backing up, but I'm hoping it's both. Um, so, oh, oh, she, after losing a lot of manuscripts, many plural, plural, plural. Oh my gosh. She, like that hurts. Like, that, that is, that is, yeah, I, the pain, I feel it. And um, yeah, anybody who has suffered a backup suddenly, get, or a loss suddenly gets good at backing up. So please start backing up before that's you. <laughs> um, so there's several ways to do this. Um, uh, yeah, I, <laughs> sorry, I'm not gonna get over that really quickly. I spent, um, worked really hard, got some scenes I was really happy with and um, they crashed. And my, my excuse for this was I was traveling, I was in an area with no internet. Um, all I had was my computer. I didn't have any external media to back up on, um, and whatever stuff went bad and, and I only lost what I had done there, but, oh, it's, it, no, yeah, just no. <laughs> but again, I see this come up in, in writers groups all the time. So I'm going to strongly recommend backups. And again, there's multiple ways you can do this. Um, I like to use a cloud backup. Um, Backing up on physical media in your home is also good. Don't get me wrong. But if your house burns down and you lose every, I mean, you're losing a lot anyway, but also every manuscript you've ever written and that's, you know, not good. Or, you know, it doesn't have to be that dramatic. 
you know, a pipe breaks and soaks the desk where you had your stuff stored, you know, whatever, something happens. Um, so I like to use online, um, Dropbox is a very well-known one. OneDrive also very well-known, pretty stable. Um, you know, there's a lot of cloud backup services out there. Um, I'm going to throw some links in the chat. These are affiliate links. Um, they should get you some free storage if you use them. If you don't want to use them, great. Use something else. I don't care. <laughs> Just make sure that you are using something. Um, and then with that, I have Scrivener set to autosave every two seconds. Yes, paranoia, but healthy paranoia. Okay. Um, you can do the same with Microsoft Word or pretty much any of your favorite you know, processors are going to be able, you can set up an auto save that happens fairly frequently. By, by the auto saving every two seconds, saving into my local folder, which automatically black backs up to the cloud, I am never more than a few seconds away from a backup. And so I'm never losing more than a sentence or two at a time in the worst case scenario. So pretty, pretty please back up your work. Okay. Um, the next thing is, where are you storing all of your expenses related receipts and invoices? So if you were here on December 1st, when we had uh, Chris Morris in to talk about accounting for writers and um, deductions and all of those great things. And uh, so that's a good episode to go back and review if you missed it. Um, but I have on my uh, computer, a folder that says taxes, a folder inside that that says 2021, and it already has invoices in it from this year's expenses, even though it's only the fifth, I'm already dropping money. <laughs> but um, it's going to make it, my life is going to be so simple because everything's in one place. And um, we've talked before about, you know, using spreadsheets to track things, um, having, you know, everything neatly organized so you're not desperately at the end of, um, you know, under the deadline for tax season, scrambling around trying to find ways to take deductions off your work. So, um, oh, <laughs> and, and QuickBooks, but we try to look at QuickBooks as infrequently as possible. Yeah, I used to use QuickBooks and I, I got out of it because it just made me angry and I've got enough angry in my life that I don't need <laughs> QuickBooks adding to it. But, um, but yeah, just again, have whatever system works for you is great. Just have a system. Um, so go ahead and be, keep, be keeping those, um, those invoices and those receipts as you go. So next one's a little bit different. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Just I need to, okay. Yeah. Sorry. I was, jump back into the chat. Shyrox is saying she's going to improve, but yeah, you're, there's lots of, there's again, so many options. I don't care which one you choose. If it works for you, it's working for you. Great. Just have something that does work for you. So the next one's a little bit different. Um, but let's talk about ergonomics for a minute because writing is traditionally a very sedentary occupation and it is also a long game. You know, nobody writes, um, you know, nobody's going to sit down, write their first best-selling novel in a week and then never do it again. Like, um, it's probably just not statistically likely. So most of us, um, in the writing line tend to sit for a long time. Uh, we have keyboards, we have monitors, we have, you know, we're using a mouse, you know, all these things that we know will take a toll on us physically. So, uh, my recommendation is to plan now to save time, money, and pain in the future. Um, so think about, you know, I have, um, and I've talked about this, I think, I think I've talked about this before. I've definitely done it on the blog. I don't remember if I've done it here. Um, but I have an adjustable desk and a treadmill that I walk on, um, which is fantastic. That, that was really good. And, um, yeah. And then I flip the desk and come over here to sit for you know, all my video work. So that's, that's one thing. Um, recommend, uh, whether or not you, have, you know, have a, a standing desk or a sitting desk or a treadmill desk or, you know, whatever you can have an ergonomic keyboard. You can have an urban ergonomic mouse. You could use dictation, make sure you have, um, a chair that's actually supportive. Um, I, my absolute guilty pleasure is I will sit in my bed wrapped up in warm blankets with a Doberman draped over my legs and my laptop. And, um, I love to work that way. And it's really not that great for me. <laughs> Frequently, um, you know, I, I, I have a lap desk now, which helps, but, um, 
but I spent years hurting because of that. Um, so I'm trying to be better now, I'm trying to have better habits. Um, this summer I brought, bought, actually, I will show you, let's see, can I get it up here? This is the Microsoft Sculpt ergonomic keyboard. Um, I did a lot of research on keyboards. This one got, um, got pretty good marks on it. Um, you will feel super awkward trying to use this for the first time. In fact, just in, just today in one of my writer's groups, somebody posted saying, help, I got this keyboard. I can't type on it. <laughs> like hang in there. It'll be okay. You know, you'll get, you'll get fluency back. I promise. Um, but, um, so I quite liked that one. Um, and then Kate, who's frequently in our chat as well. I don't see her here tonight. Um, Katie Ivanrest, she put me onto a vertical mouse and um, this one's a relatively cheap uh, version of that. And um, and so that, what that does is instead of having, you know, your wrist like this, it's in a more natural position for you to be using your fingers a lot. And um, so I recommend both of those. I will throw those in the chat as well, um, just because yeah, it is a nice keyboard and it, you will totally feel, um, not, uh, fluent, uh, when you're just, when you start with the keyboard, that's just, that's fine. It's going to be okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, my husband had to borrow my computer for something. He's like, I hate your keyboard. And I'm like, yeah, I, I get that. It's different, but it, it, honestly, it's a couple of days. You'll be fine. Exercise back bike desk. That is great. That's another one. Yeah. Um, so that, that again, anything that's just moving, what we know is that being that sedentary for that long is not that great for you. Um, so again, just kind of, uh, think of ways to, again, make good choices now to save, you know, pain, time, money later. So one of the things that I want to get into, I've toyed with, but I haven't committed to getting good at is dictation. And, um, so I need to, I need to get better at that so I can, again, ease up on, um, before I got, before I got this new keyboard, um, I was starting to feel some pain in my fingers. Um, and I was like, Oh, that's not great. I mean, I've had wrist issues before I have tiny wrists. I have the, um, I literally have the wrists of a five-year-old. I had, I commissioned some leather work, um, from a guy who made me some leather braces and he, um, he mailed me back and he's like, are these measurements really accurate? Like, did you really do careful measurements? And I said, yeah, those are, those are, those are, my wrists. And he said, okay, I'm just going to finish these pieces on my five-year-old daughter. Um, but yeah, so I, I have abnormally small wrists. Um, so, oh, <laughs> oh, so Bridger's mentioning that, um, you know, she tried a treadmill desk and, you know, was careening off sideways. Guys, one of the things that I mentioned, and, and you've got something that's working to you, fantastic. One of the questions I get frequently when I talk about my treadmill desk is, um, you know, people are talking about trying to use it and how fast you have to use it. No, no, no. The point of a treadmill desk is just that you're standing and moving. It's not about logging excessive miles or speed. This is not a treadmill like you're trying to do your marathon training on. Um, I tell most people start at half a mile an hour or you're barely moving your feet one in front of the other. And it's, you know, that that's all you need to do. Um, I, work faster than that now. Um, but I don't have to, I just prefer to, um, because I was sneaking in some exercise while I was, <laughs> while I was working, but it, you know, in no way is that required to get the, the benefits of the treadmill desk is that you are standing and moving. It's not that you're logging speed or distance. So Bridger says she was going super slow. She just sucks at walking. <laughs> okay. Also, um, you know, match to you what you're good at, you know, <laughs> I know that it, legitimately though. Um, I'm, I'm glad that you mentioned that because that is a question. And usually I try to mention that when I, um, when I talk about the treadmill desk, because that is the number one thing I get is people are like, well, you know, how can you get work done while you're walking quick? And I'm like, cause you're not really, you know, you're not, if you're bouncing around, you're doing it wrong. Like start at half a mile an hour, you know, like you're, you're good. You're fine. Okay. Uh, what are we doing? Oh, let's actually talk about goals. Let's get around to finally talking about goals. Excuse me. And again, I'm not going to spend a lot of time here because it's January and you can't go on the internet with somebody trying to sell you a goal setting course or, you know, giving you a new goal plan or, you know, whatever. And you're, you're dodging it like you're dodging, you know, last Christmas a month ago. So, um, so I'm not going to do so much of that. Um, but 
my day job is behavior, as you've heard me say. I like getting behavioral change is what I do. Um, and so this is why I get frustrated with a lot of the goal setting talk that does happen around um, this time because they're, it's scientifically very poorly done. Um, so one, one thing that we know is, you know, my goal is to yeah, be able to sink a free throw or, or you slam dunk. I don't know. We're gonna, I'm going to spike a volleyball, whatever. Um, you know, the, the goal there is not to jump higher. I need to talk about why well, I need to bend my legs, uh, bend my knees so I can get deeper, so I can get more launch out of those same more, you know, more muscle movement. And, you know, so I need to talk about how that's going to happen, not jump higher. Because if I could jump higher, it would already be happening and I wouldn't need to make it a goal, right? <laughs> so, um, so yeah, and you know, Bridget's pointing out this is the most ambitious month of the year. And it is also the most failure ridden month of the year because we set these goals and so much, you know, so much ambition. And then we set ourselves up for failure by doing it poorly. So let's talk about how to do it better. Um, how am I going to achieve this is I think the most important part, I possibly even more important than what you're going to achieve because it doesn't matter what my ambitions are if I set them up in a way that I can't get to them. So there we go. Um, so effects or results are not good goals. And where we see this in say the writing career, um, is, you know, I'm going to be the number one bestseller in my category. I'm going to sell this book to this dream agent or this dream publisher house, publishing house or whatever. And those are great. Don't give me, I like, I have those thoughts too. Okay. Like we, those are, those are fine, but those are not good goals because I have no control over them. And it sounds, well, Laura, of course you have control. No, actually I don't. So I want to be the number one bestseller in this category. Okay. There's a lot of stuff I can do to try to make that happen, but I don't have any control over other authors. I don't have any control over the readers. I don't have control over world events that might shift, you know, tastes or, um, you know, uh, band, you know, something big could happen and everybody stops thinking about um, books in the week that I release. I mean, these things, and I've had this happen on a, on a, you know, non pandemic kind of scale, you know, big uh, before, but um, you know, this stuff happens and uh, oh, I felt so bad for, I had friends releasing books last March and April um, during the first wave of, you know, lockdowns and Americans finally realizing that the pandemic was happening and, you know, all this kind of stuff. And, you know, you know, what, if they had set all of their goals on this is going to happen during launch week, they don't have control. They can't, they can't achieve those. So, um, you know, if I really want to sell this book to this particular dream agent or this particular dream publisher, hi, you need to get on the chair and not on my lap while I'm working. Thank you. Good talk. Um, <laughs> so hi, hold on. Let me turn on the, uh, the dog cam now that we have my co-pilot here. Let's see. There's, there she is. There she is. That's a good girl. All right, let's get back to work. Um, so one thing that happens a lot and you know, this is where you can do everything right and it still doesn't work. Um, is, you know, let's say, uh, you're, you're shopping a, uh, South Asian historical fantasy, just picking something and it's really, really good. And you send it to this agent or to this publisher and they like it, but they just picked up a South Asian historical fantasy two weeks ago, and they're not going to have two of you know, two books that close in the same quarter or, or whatever. So, um, so that's the kind of thing that can, sorry, I'm getting a treat for my co-pilot here. Um, that's the kind of thing that can completely throw off your ability to meet those goals because you didn't actually have control of the situation. So, um, <laughs> beat me to it. Yeah. Yeah. Dog was coming. Um, so, okay. Uh, where was I going? So what we want to do is we want to set goals that have to do with things that I can achieve, things that I can do. And if I pick up that other stuff along the way, fantastic, but I'm not going to fail because of something that I had no control over. Okay. So there's my, there's our, there's our thing with goals. So goals that are good, uh, I'm going to say action goals because I don't really have a good word for it. Um, so I will submit eight short stories to traditional magazines or to anthologies uh, in the next six months. Picking numbers at random, adjust to your personal situation. I will query six agents 
and then I will compile their responses and revise according to their feedback. I will write 30,000 words this month. Okay. All of those are things that you can do. They're not reliant on somebody else's participation <laughs> in reaching you and your goal. So now what I like about those two is those are things that, um, are great ways to pick up the other things. If I say I'm going to query six agents in the next six, you know, in the next two months, I'm going to query six agents. Again, numbers totally random. Let me go with the thing. If I get to agent number three and they write back and say, I want to pick this up so that I don't get to query six agents, that is the kind of failure that I can tolerate. Okay. That is fine. That's a good way to fail your goal. But, um, you know, if the agents are like, oh man, we just picked up a South Asian historical fantasy, um, you know, go, you know, you know, go try another castle. Um, then I still achieved my goal regardless of the situations that were going on around me. So yeah, Bridger's like, oh no, anything but success. That would be the worst. Yeah. I can totally, fi I'm fine with failing my goal by failing into success. <laughs> That's good. So, okay. Um, so think about what do you need to do? You know, take your, take your big, wouldn't it be nice ifs. Okay. That is the, wouldn't it be nice if I was number one in this category? Wouldn't it be nice if I got picked up by the state? Wouldn't it be nice if I got my, you know, Netflix, Amazon prime video adaptation, whatever. Uh, you know, those are great, but what do I need to do to get there? That's what you're going to break down. That's what you're going to turn into goals. So what words do I need to write to make this happen? Do I need to outline or do I need to be writing prose? These are relatively simple decisions that sometimes we skip. <laughs> like, oh, I really want this to happen. I should start a book. Well, are you ready to start the book? Are you a person who needs to outline before you start the book? Um, how do I collect agents or markets information? You know, if I say I'm going to send this out to six literary magazines or six agents, do you have six literary magazines or six agents that are a good match for your story? If not, how are you going to get that information? Because just Googling literary agents and sending it off and hoping is, um, not a way to get, to get a great match. And also some, there's a lot of scammers out there that are, have literary agent websites. And so, um, nothing against actual agents, but please avoid the scammers. And, uh, so you want to, you know, collect your information so that you can send out those six queries. Um, what do you need to do to arrange your schedule so that writing happens? What do you need to do to arrange your environment so that writing happens? Um, both of those are important. You know, I definitely, definitely write better in some environments than others. Okay. Um, so that is, that's where I'm going is just, um, take your goals, make sure that there's something that are in your control. They don't rely on anybody else's contributions to, uh, to make happen. And, um, you know, if they, if they do rely on somebody else doing something, change them. That's not a great goal for you. Um, that's, that sounds like a great, wouldn't it be nice if, um, but that's not a great goal and you can do better and be fair to yourself. So <laughs> then take those goals and break them down into what do you need to do to make those goals happen? It is also completely fine. Sorry, I've got to adjust the dog cam here. There we go. It is completely fine to adjust your goals as you go along, you know, maybe you're finding, oh man, you know, I thought I was going to send this to, um, these literary magazines, but I'm figuring out this is actually a better fit for, okay, great. Adjust your goal. It's your goal. You can do that. Okay. All right. So my personal example, I wanted to not just lecture. I wanted to tell you where I was working on this too. Um, I want to increase discovery of my books. Um, I'm getting really good reviews, really good feedback. Um, but I want more readers. Yeah. So, uh, I want to increase discovery and then specifically I'm going to do that through advertising. Um, so I'm looking at, okay, the auction ads model is something that I should look into. Um, so I'm going to look at AMS ads. So those are the ads on Amazon. And, um, then I've also decided I need to look into BookBub ads. Um, so, all right, those are complicated beasts. You can, excuse me, you can certainly get in there and just start throwing things around. Um, but they're not going to, it's not going to be effective and it's not going to be the best use of your money either. Um, so things I need to do to make this happen. I need education. So I'm taking an ads course. I need to practice. Um, you know, we've all taken courses and then not applied it. So I need to actually practice making ads. Um, so I have, um, I'm doing that right now weekly. I may change that to daily. Um, so I've got a, a task that's going to happen there. I need to set aside a budget 
for training myself to use ads. Um, not only does the course cost, it did cost me money, but you know, making ads costs money. Um, so I need to know how much can I afford to spend on learning because you're know, beginning ads, you know, it's like your first book. They're not going to break out and run away bestsellers. So, um, so I'm, I have some ads that I'm going to spend time on and how much money can afford it. Can I, you know, and so I have to sit down and do, do some math there. So those are, you know, where I'm going is, okay, my goal is discovery. Um, I, I, you know, wouldn't it be nice if I picked up another 5,000 people in my newsletter or, you know, whatever, but what are the things that I can do to make that happen? Those are my actual goals. Those are my actual tasks. Okay. And I'm just going to evangelize for a moment on the power of lists. Lists are great. Um, to do lists are fantastic and run my life. Um, so, oh my gosh, what are you doing? Get off the treadmill. No, go play. All right. <laughs> so sorry if you're hearing that. Um, to do lists are fantastic. To do lists for my life. I use Todoist, which is a app. It has a free and a premium version. I use that on my computer and on my smartphone. Um, I also use Trello or any other variety of a Kanban board would be, um, great for this. Those can be digital. Those can be physical, you know, a whiteboard on your, on your wall, um, you know, post-it notes in your notebook. There's so many different ways to do this. Again, find the one that works for you. If it works for you, it's working for you. So great. Um, if it's not working for you, find something that does work for you. But what I'm going to say is anytime that the lists are amazing. They, they work though only if anytime you think of something, you immediately add it to the list. I need to remember to add that to my list later is another thing you have to remember is another thing that you could potentially forget. And it's a thing that's taking up bandwidth in your brain. So you're not thinking about something else. This is why I really, really personally am into the digital versions because I have my phone with me. So no matter where I am, I can immediately add that to my to-do list. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, if you're a pen and paper person and you use a bullet journal or, you know, whatever, um, and you have that with you to always add to it, great. That works for you too. Um, if you tend to use a paper calendar that does not travel around with you, um, find another way to make sure stuff you think of gets onto it. So whatever, whatever your system is that works, if it's working, it's working. If it's not working, fix it. Um, but you know, I can be like, oh man, I didn't set up any beta readers for this. Oh, I need to get ARCs out. Oh, I need to, add, I need to get people to read my ARCs. Um, oh, oh, I did a, I did a paperback cover and an ebook cover, but I forgot my audio cover. I need to make sure an audio cover gets done. Um, did I make images for marketing to drop into social media? Um, oh, did I submit to this particular review site? I don't remember. Like all of that stuff goes into your to-do list. Um, so I have my life has, um, a huge to-do list on my, on Todoist, um, every day. What I like about Todoist too, um, you, you can do, you can do little check boxes to make it go away or on the mobile app, you can do this very satisfying swipe and make it go. And it's, yeah, I'm sorry. Like I know Bridger gets this. I like, I know she understands the, uh, cause we talked about to-do lists at one point. Um, and the, you know, you have to have the right feedback for I murdered this task. You know? <laughs> so that's the thing. Um, but, um, you know, being able to add that in the moment, being able to get rid of it. And then I have, you know, my daily life tasks that go on Todoist. And then for big projects, like I'm launching this novel that's going to have a long run up and, um, and I'm going to launch, uh, you know, paperback and ebook at the same time, maybe paperback, ebook, audiobook, or whatever. Um, that kind of thing goes into Trello or again, any Kanban board that, um, you know, that, whatever format you particularly like, I guess Kanban's the format, but whatever platform you like, um, digital, uh, paper, whatever, whiteboard. Um, and because there's so many moving parts to that and the Kanban board, I can look at a glance and immediately see what is on my list that needs to be done, what's in process and what's done. And I can see that all in one looking. So, um, Okay. Yeah. Bridger suggesting, um, to do list systems. Yeah. I, I actually have some blog posts on productivity and things that I explored that work for me, but I can easily, um, bring that over into the show and we can talk about that, um, back and forth. Yeah. Cause that's, that's something that, um, I, uh, I've, I've definitely improved on, <laughs> I'm proud of improving on it. So, okay. Um, where was it? Cause my dog just moved my notes with her big head. Oh my gosh. Okay. 
Um, oh, so one thing that I like um, that I use on Todoist is repeating tasks. So, uh, and I, you know, I just, when I enter the task the first time I say, okay, this happens every Monday. So for right now, that's, um, you know, if I'm testing my, my ads, I said I was doing that once a week. So I've got a repeating task once a week to do, um, some ad work. Um, when I was doing world Ember in December, which is the world building, um, roughly like NaNoWriMo, but for world building and it's hosted by world anvil. And we'll talk about that later. Um, but in December, I actually set up a repeating task that every day reminded me to do the World Ember prompt because they had daily prompts that I wanted to do as well as the other world building. Um, so you can set that up, you know, and it could be the first of the month, first of the month every day I have a reminder to give the dogs their heartworm pills, you know, so you can do all of that kind of thing. Um, yeah, so yeah, okay, exactly. So Chai Red Fox is in the chat saying, you know, she gets overwhelmed with the number of tasks and separating them from ideas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's actually a really, really good point is that you have ideas and then breaking them down into tasks is a separate skill and has to be done separately because ideas, um, ideas, write this paranormal cozy mystery. Tasks. There's a lot that goes into that, okay? So so those are, yeah, okay, yeah. So, okay, <laughs> Bridger says she's here by the, in this moment by the grace of a repeating task in Tick Tick. Yeah, so um, I'm not gonna lie, like having a digital to-do list is huge in allowing me to stay on top of things. Um, I'm not even gonna pretend to be embarrassed by that. You know, I have a system, it's working for me, then we're good. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's all about splitting. So, um, here's the other thing that, um, that I love about, and again, find the system that works for you. For me, digital to-do lists are more efficient. I have friends who live out of a bullet journal. If it's working for you, it's working for you. But I love being able to set tasks way in advance. So I'm going to need a cover for this book. I put the, that out um, in advance to make sure that I talk to a cover designer. Like that would be good. Um, setting or canceling promotional pricing. You know, I, I can sign up for a promotion and um, two months later, the price needs to change on this day. Do not try to remember that. Two months later, I'm not going to remember signed up for a promotion. I'm not going to remember I wrote that book. Like that's, that's how my brain works. So I set up the, um, that task, you know, to, to change the price and to change the price back. That's all scheduled way in advance. Um, yeah, like tsunami of tasks. I've got too many things to think about to try to remember to change um, my, to try to remember to change my pricing on a particular day. It's not going to happen. Here's the other thing that lists are fantastic for. Not only do I remember what I have to do, I don't have to remember what I have to do. I also don't have to remember what I've already done. And this sounds so simplistic, but honestly, it's a big thing. Like when you go, oh, shoot, I really need to and then you go into your to-do list and you find out you already did it. <laughs> Hooray. Okay. But I'm not losing, um, you know, mental bandwidth and energy trying to remember to do it, trying to remember that I've done it, worrying over whether or not it got done. No, no, it's all recorded for me. So great. Um, <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. I'm laughing at Bridger because this is my life right here. I love the aesthetics of paper planners. I love buying them. I love setting them up. I love watching YouTube videos of other people decorating them. Can't do it for more than three days without getting wildly off track. Yeah. Uh, my planner heart is analog, but my brain is digital. I have, I have friends who have the most beautiful bullet journals and it's just never going to happen. <laughs> like I understand. I look at it and I'm like, that is a work of art. Go you. I've got to do it. Like, you know, okay. But again, find what works for you. What I did find what works for me with paper is an idea notebook. Like, oh, this is interesting. I should think, write down this premise. I could explore this. What about, you know, what about, you know, if this is a, would this be a series? Here's an interesting factoid. Okay. I can do all that in paper, but if you want me to be organized and on time with tasks, digital works much better. Find the system that works for you. And we might talk about all those system options in the future. Cause it sounds like I am not the only person <laughs> who has needed to explore that. All right. Um, so if I have, um, let's say one of my goals is to get regular about sending a newsletter. Um, so that is a goal. That is an actionable item that I can do. Um, what that frequently turns into for a lot of people is I'm supposed to send a newsletter. I will sit down and I will stare at this screen. 
absolutely nothing. Okay. So what you could do instead is just keep a running file in your idea notebook, your digital, whatever, however it works for you of writing down funny things, interesting things, exciting things. Oh, I should really, I can't tell you how many times I have actually written a newsletter and then like two hours after sending it saying, Oh, I should have mentioned this promotion. Oh, I should have mentioned, okay. Stuff that actually would have been relevant to my newsletter subscribers. And I just didn't include it because I didn't have a list for that task. Um, so keep keeping, you know, if you collect those things for a month, then when you sit down to write your newsletter, um, you've got something more than a blank page to go on and you're not going to forget the things that you really need to include in that. So that would be a, a good, you know, category to, to track things with. Um, that's definitely more of a do as I say, not as I do, because as I said, I'm still in the case of finding, oh, I probably should have mentioned, <laughs> okay. Um, I'm trying, I'm trying to get better at that. So I have a list for this show. I have, um, in Evernote, which positively runs my life. I'm going to do a whole show on Evernote at some point. Um, but I have a collection of, uh, topic ideas. I have a collection of, um, resources to use for those, um, topics. Um, when I did the, oh, what was it? It was on um, rewards versus reinforcements. And, um, Kate sent me an article and said, can you, know, okay, let's, can you talk about this? And, um, so I had that in Evernote so I could make notes and I had the art, her original article to re, to refer to and, you know, that kind of thing. So, um, oh gosh, I love Evernote so much. Uh, like absolutely runs my life. <laughs> I'm going to do a whole show on Evernote at some point. Yeah. Ever, thanks to I read Fox. She says she's looking forward to the Evernote one. Yeah. It's, um, that will totally be the Evernote evangelist. Yeah. <laughs> so there we go with, um, with all that, I recently learned that there's a quitters day and it's not as exciting as it sounds. Um, but Strava, which is a fitness, um, fitness app, uh, company, um, tracked a bunch of, uh, data that people were recording in their Strava fitness apps and determined that January 19th, was the day that people tended to fall off the wagon. <laughs> He's like, they started strong. They made it, you know, almost three weeks into the new year. And then it started coming apart. Um, so January 19th, it would be quitters day. Quitters day, January 19th in 2021 falls on a Tuesday. We will be having a show on that day. So what I would like to do is, um, if you are, if you are hearing the sound of my voice, um, you know, before January the 19th, um, head over to my Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash Laura V Baugh, which is an odd, um, uh, it is, it is the odd duck out for my usual Laura V A B name. Um, and it is what it is. I'm sorry, but facebook.com slash Laura V Baugh, B A U G H. And you'll find a post that I very quickly put up right before, um, we went live here. And just tell me about your, your writing goals. And I want those to be your action goals. Not, I want to be the best seller. Not, I want to sell to this particular publishing house. You know, what am I doing to make this happen? Thank you very much, Bridger, for throwing that into the chat. She's got the link for us. Um, and then we're going to come back on January 19th. And this is definitely, sorry guys, if you're catching this on the YouTube replay or on the podcast or whatever, nope, this has to be January 19th live on Twitch, must be present to win. I'm going to ask you to tell me what you've done with that action item. And I will have something for people who made it to Quitter's Day and beyond. Okay, we are gonna, we are gonna make this through. So, um, so head over, put, put, your, uh, put your goal in, and then I will see you again on the 19th and we will do this. So, yay. Meanwhile, in the future, yes, a party. It'll be like an achievement party. Woo, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So in the future, next week, we're going to talk about how to use criticism um, to revise your writing, to change what you're doing, to make your craft better, to uh, make your story better to make yourself, uh, more resilient to criticism. Okay. There's lots of different things. The criticism is, um, a, uh, <laughs> sorry, I just laughed. I said, I called it an achievement party and Bridger says, sounds much better than, oh boy, a quitters party. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's going to be an achievement party. We, we, yeah, we will, we will not be quitting on that. We will quit quitting on January 19th. Okay. We are January 18th. We are 
quitting, quitting. Yes, that totally makes sense. All right. <laughs> so, um, criticism next week, we'll talk about how to use criticism. Um, and I'm going to talk, I, I think too, about how to translate criticism because frequently what is written down is not what I need to do with that. So, um, we'll talk about that as well. Then the following week, which I think is January 19th, which is achievement party day. Um, we will have a special guest for learn with me. Uh, that's going to be Amelia Blazer, who is going to talk about metal casting for authors who want to write about historical or fantasy metal work. Um, and I've known her a long time. She is freaking brilliant is the uh, short way to put that. Um, so please come and check that out because that's going to be a lot of fun. And she's going to show us some really cool stuff. And I'm definitely going to learn things that I don't know about metal casting um, that are going to be relevant in my uh, fantastic worlds. So, oh, and it's a hobby you want to learn more about. Yeah, so please, like she's got so much information and really cool stuff. Um, and then I'm glad Shy Red Fox is in our chat here today because um, she and I and possibly a third person are going to do a special bonus episode talking about World Anvil, which I am a total noob at, but I am learning about and it's pretty cool. So World Anvil is a platform um, specifically to facilitate world building, um, more complex world building. So if you've got, um, you know, I've got this particular religious ritual, what happens in this town on this day. And I need to keep that straight from, you know, all this other stuff that's happening in this town that's 20 miles over, you know, World Anvil is a great place to just organize uh, so many things. Yeah. Yeah. I am so looking forward to that too. It's, it will be fun and I will shamelessly take her knowledge and, um, hopefully bring the rest of you along with me. So <laughs> please keep an eye. We're, we're, haven't confirmed the date. We're waiting on the third, um, third person to confirm the date. And then I will post the date for that. So, um, so just stay tuned. There will be a special bonus episode all about World Anvil. And that is what I have for today. So this was our first of the year, obligatory, you know, yay, new year, new episode thing. Um, but I'm hoping that, you know, as we're again, the big advantage here is to at any point you can stop and go, Hey, this isn't working. I need to change something fresh start. And that fresh start will be just as good. Um, because that's how the science works because you can read in Daniel Pink's book. So, so please, um, do your little housekeeping. You make sure that your, uh, your, uh, digital hygiene is good. Make sure that you're taking care of yourself and then set yourself up for success in your writing goals and then come back on the 19th and we will share our achievements with what we have managed to do. So that is what I have. It is, sorry, I just totally almost went back into that spiel again and we don't want to do that. No, break the break out of the cycle. <laughs> that is it. We are done. If you guys have questions, you know where to reach me on any of my social media or through the form on my website. And I will see you guys next week when we'll talk about criticism. Thank you and have a fantastic day.